In this video lecture, we want to take a look at the common application of breaking apart a larger string into a series of smaller individual substrings, an operation called parsing. Okay, let's get started. String parsing refers to the common string application of breaking apart a larger string, or tokenizing it, into smaller individual strings called tokens, using specific separator characters called delimiters. Delimiters are simply special characters used to mark the boundaries between individual substrings. Default delimiters are often just standard Java whitespace characters, such as spaces, tabs, or new lines, but they are often other characters as well, such as commas, periods, colons, semicolons, or any other situation-specific characters. I like to examine parsing because it's a common and useful string application which nicely ties together most of the string methods which we've recently taken a look at. But to do parsing, we also need a few more string methods up our sleeve. So let's take a look at those first. But before going on, let's make sure we're clear on what we mean by a delimiter. Here are several real-life examples of strings which contain individual data fields separated by delimiters. In each case, hopefully it's pretty clear what the delimiters are. In this date, the delimiter is the forward slash, which separates the month, day, and year. For this IP address, the delimiter is a period, which separates the various address fields. For this PC-like full directory path, the separator is again the forward slash, which separates the different nested directory levels. For this config file line, we might imagine there to be multiple delimiters this colon, and then several individual spaces, or maybe a tab. In a case such as this, we might interpret these adjacent delimiters to be one single delimiter. Here are a couple of lines which we might imagine to be from some human resources database dump, or perhaps from some Excel spreadsheet in a comma-separated value format. In the first case, the delimiter is the colon, whereas in the second case, it's exactly the same information, but now the separator is a comma. Notice also that here we can imagine this individual date field to itself have a second level delimiter, the forward slash, as we saw in this first example. So maybe we'd need two levels of parsing upon this string. Finally, here's some made up standard email address. Depending upon the purpose, the delimiter here might be the at sign between the username and the domain, and then the period for the individual fields. But I think you get the idea here that a delimiter is just some context-specific character upon which we can separate a longer string into shorter substrings. Before we can get to the action of parsing, there are a couple more string capabilities that we need first. Here is another look at the index of method, which as you recall, finds the location of a specified search string or search character the earlier version we saw, however, didn't include the second input argument. In this overloaded version of the method, we can also specify the index position in the string from which to begin searching. So notice that if the from index second input is equal to zero, this just reduces to that earlier version, but this version is more general. We are no longer restricted to searching from the beginning of the string for the first occurrence of some substring, we can now find any subsequent occurrence of that substring. This is going to be important to us in the example we'll be taking a look at. For starters, consider this name string parse str, which reads as shown here. To fully parse up this string, we need to find the locations of all the commas, not just the first one. How would we do that? Well, for starters, we would find the location of the first comma using either one of these two statements, which are functionally identical. In the first one, we are locating the index of the first comma found in this original string, starting by default at the beginning of the string. As we can see, we find that location at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 within the string. In the second form, we get the same result, except we've explicitly told it to start searching at index 0, which is of course the beginning of any string. There's no big difference between these in finding the first comma, but to find the index of the second comma, now we must tell the search where to start looking, which is one spot beyond the known location of that first comma, as we see here. So we find the first comma first, and then use that as the jumping off point to locate the second comma, 
which if we count off in the string, we'll find at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, index 13. Without this second input argument to the index of method, we simply keep finding the first comma over and over again, which is useless here. The other new string capability that we require in parsing is the trim method, which simply returns a copy of its original string with any leading or trailing white space removed. We'd use this to clean up any string to remove any excess white space. In this example, let's say we start off with this string. If we apply the trim method to it and save the result, now we have the same string but with any leading and trailing white space removed. Note that any internal white space is left unchanged though. To confirm the trim cleanup of the string, we can simply print the before and after string lengths like so, to show that we have indeed shortened the string by two spaces at its head and its tail ends. Now that we have all of the needed capabilities in hand, here's the general algorithmic approach to parsing a string. This is along the lines of what you'll probably be doing in your current strings homework program, so you may want to follow this carefully. First, set up the string that needs to be parsed. You might read this in from the user, or simply for our purposes, just explicitly declare and initialize a new string object. Next, make sure you know what the intended delimiter character is, and then find where all the occurrences of it are within your string. You'll need to use the index of method to do this, and you'll need the alternate more general form to find all the delimiters past the first one. Once you know the index positions of all the delimiters, you can use the substring method to extract any desired substring from between two successive delimiter positions. Finally, you may want to clean up that extracted substring by applying the trim method to it to remove any leading or trailing white space. This is the general approach to be taken. Now let's see this a little more visually. Here's the same string parsing algorithm, this time represented visually. Let's say that we have this string to begin with and we want to extract the substring data3 from it programmatically. One crude, quick and dirty way of doing it would be to count the index locations and then hardwire them into a substring method call, but that's not the way to go in real life since it assumes we always have this specific string. We much prefer a more general solution that would work with any string. So here we know that the beginning of the string is at index 0, the end of the string is at index length minus 1, and we can use the overloaded form of the index of method to find p1 through p3. The way we approach this is that we use the known index of p1 to find p2, and then the known location of p2 to find p3. Once we know where all these delimiter locations are, we can use p2 and p3 as the start and end input arguments to substring to extract the desired substring, which we can then clean up using the trim method. Let's next go over a code example of performing these steps. Here's a short code example demonstrating all the steps we've just gone over. I'll defer the details to the short code walkthrough video for stringparsing.java, which is shown here. Open up this file in JGrasp so you can follow along. You'll find this example in the usual place on Canvas. There are two main things of note here. First, on line 28, notice that the search for the index of the second comma begins one character past the location of the first comma. Otherwise, we'd just be finding the first comma over and over again. Also, notice that here on line 31, we don't want to include the comma within the substring that we return, so we begin the extraction one index past the location of the first comma. The second input is fine as is, because remember that it's going to extract up to only one spot before this location, and so that trailing comma will not be part of the return substring. When all is said and done, here is the desired extracted substring, in all caps, and its length is the expected six characters. Again, make sure that this example makes sense to you, and you can refer back to it while completing this week's program on strings.